Section 11 of Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Brian Heenan. Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume 1, Section 11. Monday, 16. When the time of parting came, I felt some unwillingness to leave my kind and valuable friends. However, I took horse and rode sixteen miles to Mr. G.'s, where a large company attended to hear the word. Many were also present at Mr. C.'s. In examining the leaders, I found them steady, but refused to give a license to an exhorter who had been too unwatchful. After a long prejudice, Mr. I.G. invited me to his house and treated me kindly. In preaching at Mr. B.'s, my heart was troubled within me for the dullness and unbelief of the people. Wednesday, 18. Road to Susquehanna, and many of the leading men were present, with a large congregation. Simple D.R. has been an instrument of real and great good to the people in these parts. Thursday, 19. I am happy in God after all my labors. But when amongst my friends, my mind inclines to a degree of cheerfulness bordering on levity. Oh, for more watchfulness! A more constant, striking sense of an omnipresent God. Preach today in the market house at Charlestown. The congregation was somewhat large, and many of them very attentive. The company was large at Bohemia on Friday, and my own heart was deeply affected, and much drawn out while speaking from Revelations 3, 3. At Newcastle on Saturday, Satan was there, diverting the people by a play. However, several came to hear me enforce these words, Be not ye partakers with them. Monday, 23. After preaching yesterday at Newport and Red Clay Creek, I rode today to Chester, and the weary spoke from Galatians 6:14. Here my old friends Mr. M. and Mr. S. from New York met me and the next day we rode to Philadelphia. Hitherto the Lord hath helped. Wednesday, 25. Our conference began. The overbearing spirit of a certain person had excited my fears. My judgment was stubbornly opposed for a while, and at last submitted to. But it is my duty to bear all things with a meek and patient spirit. Our conference was attended with great power, and, all things considered, with great harmony. We agreed to send Mr. W. to England, and all acquiesced in the future stations of the preachers. My lot was to go to York. My body and mind have been much fatigued during the time of this conference, and if I were not deeply conscious of the truth and goodness of the cause in which I am engaged, I should by no means stay here. Lord, what a world is this! Yea, what a religious world! O oh, keep my heart pure! and my garments unspotted from the world. Our conference ended on Friday with a comfortable intercession. Lord's Day 29 This was a day of peace, and the Lord favored me with faith and energy while preaching to the people. I visited Mr. W., who is going to England, but found he had no taste for spiritual subjects. Lord, keep me from all superfluity of dress, and from preaching empty stuff to please the ear, instead of changing the heart. Thus has he fulfilled as a hireling his day. We had a very solemn love feast today, and on Monday my friends and I set off in the stage for New York, where we arrived on Tuesday evening about eight o'clock. We had some trifling company on the way, who talked much but to little purpose. My old friends in York were glad to see me but I still fear there is a root of prejudice remaining in the hearts of a few. May the Lord prepare me for all events, that I may act and suffer in all things like a Christian. Captain W. preached a good sermon in the evening. June 1. Considering my bodily weakness, and the great fatigue through which I have gone, it seems wonderful that my frame should support it, and be still so capable of duty. My mind is also kept in peace. My heart was much drawn out both towards God and the people while preaching this evening from Samuel seven twelve. 
but too much of the old spirit is still discoverable in my few prejudiced friends. Mr. C., not contented with his unkind and abusive letter, is still exerting all his unfriendly force. I feel myself aggrieved, but patiently commit my cause to God. Therefore their contention may subsist among themselves. I shall not contend with them. Thursday 2. In the public exercise of the evening, my heart was warmed with affection for the people. And except a very small number of dissatisfied, restless spirits, the hearts of the people are generously opened towards me. My heart is still fixed on God, and determined through grace both to serve Him and promote the prosperity of His cause. FRIDAY 3. Christ is precious to my believing heart. Blessed be God for this. It is infinitely more to me than the favor of all mankind, and the possession of all the earth. The next day my soul was also sweetly drawn out in love to God, and found great freedom and happiness in meeting the leaders and the bands. I told them that the Spirit and providence of God would certainly assist in purging the society, that the time would come when such as were insincere and half-hearted would have no place among us. Lord's Day 5 Attended the old church as usual, but clearly saw where the gospel ministry was. The Spirit of Grace mercifully assisted me in the public duties of this day. On Monday I preached with great plainness and power in the meadows, but while preaching on Tuesday evening my ideas left me, though I felt myself spirited in addressing the people by way of exhortation. Wednesday 8 The fire of divine love glowed in my heart. My soul was in peace. My affections were pure and withdrawn from earthly objects. But I fear, lest self-complacency should have any place in me. May the Lord keep me in the spirit of humility, prayer, and loving zeal. Thursday 9 While reading a sermon of Mr. Brandon's on Quench Not the Spirit, in company with a few friends, both they and I were much quickened. Blessed be God! My soul is kept in peace and power and love had great liberty this evening in pointing out the causes why we have not more of the spirit of devotion, of neglect or dullness in prayer, of too much heart attention to the world, of the want of more faith in the realities of eternity and the promises of God, of not looking more earnestly to God in humble expectation of receiving His grace, etc. Lord's Day 12 Both my body and mind are weak. As Mr. R. was thought by many to be a great preacher, I went in the afternoon to hear him. He was very stiff and studied in his composition, and dwelt much on their favorite doctrine of imputed righteousness. He appeared to have very little liberty, except in a short application. With great enlargement of heart, I spoke in the evening from these words, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. In meeting the society at night, I spoke plainly of some who neglected their bands and classes, and informed them that we took people into our societies that we might help them to become entire Christians, and if they willfully neglected those meetings, they thereby withdrew themselves from our care and assistance. The next day many people attended the preaching at the Meadows. Tuesday 14 My heart seems wholly devoted to God and he favors me with power over all outward and inward sin. My affections appear to be quite weaned from all terrestrial objects. Some people, if they felt as I feel at present, would perhaps conclude they were saved from all indwelling sin. O oh, my God, save me and keep me every moment of my life. The next day my soul was under heavy exercises, and much troubled by manifold temptations. But still, all my care was cast on the Lord. I find it hurtful to pour too much on myself. True, I should be daily employed in the duty of self-examination, and strictly attend both to my internal and external conduct. But at the same time, my soul should steadily fix the eye of faith on the blessed Jesus, my mediator and advocate at the right hand of the Eternal Father. Lord, cause thy face to shine upon me, 
and make me always joyful in thy salvation. Thursday 16. My soul was more and more delighted in God. I felt myself uneasy today on account of riding out, though I was conscious it was intended for my health. Yet to some it might have the appearance of pleasuring, and encourage them to seek their carnal pleasure in such things. Saturday 18. The Lord was my helper, and my mind was in peace. Lord's Day 19. This was a blessed and delightful day to my soul. The grace of God was eminently with me in all my public duties. Heard Mr. E. at St. Paul's Church preach from these words, Put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. He spoke well on man's fallen state, and the new creation, and brought good reasons to prove that we must be renewed in order to dwell with God. But he did not insist on the necessity of repentance and faith in order to obtain this change. Monday 20. Mr. S., Mr. W., and Mr. T. bore me company as far as Kingsbridge, on my way to New Rochelle. Was much indisposed when I reached the house of my friend Mr. D. Nevertheless, thought it my duty to preach to the people. The Lord is doing something for several souls in this place. Though they have had but very few sermons for twelve months, yet the class is lively and engaged with God. Thursday, 23. After preaching as often as I could to many people who attended at New Rochelle, I set off for York, and was met at Kingsbridge by Mr. S. and Mr. J. But on my arrival in the city I found myself very unwell, and had a painful, restless night. Friday 24. Found myself better, and was much refreshed by letters from Mr. L. and Mr. S. Y. in Maryland but one of these letters informed me that Mr. S. E. was very officious in administering the ordinances. What strange infatuation attends that man! Why will he run before Providence? Saturday, 25. My fever was very high last evening, so I took an emetic this morning. I found liberty in my own soul, and great meltings amongst the people, while preaching on the Lord's Day. Though my disorder has a tendency to oppress my spirits, yet, blessed be God, I am favored with power to conquer every spiritual foe, and my heart is sometimes wonderfully raised, as on the wings of faith and love. Monday 27 R. S., who accompanied me a few miles into the country today, was very near being drowned. He went into a stream of water to wash his horse and chase, but accidentally got out of the horse's depth, and they must all have been unavoidably lost, had not two men swam in and dragged them to the shore. Thus the Lord preserveth both man and beast. I went to bed this evening in much pain, and had an uncomfortable night. Tuesday, 28. Many of my good friends kindly visited me today, and in the afternoon I took another emetic. My heart is fixed on God, as the best of objects, but pants for more vigor, and a permanent, solemn sense of God. Rose the next morning at five, though very weak, and spent a great part of the day in reading and writing. Many people attended the public worship in the evening, though I was but just able to give them a few words of exhortation. Seeing the people so desirous to hear, now I am unable to say much to them, Satan tempts me to murmuring and discontent. May the Lord fill me with perfect resignation. Thursday 30. My body was very weak and sweated exceedingly. If I am the Lord's, why am I thus? But in his word he hath told me, If I be without chastisement, then am I a bastard and not a son. Oh, that this affliction may work in me the peaceable fruits of internal and universal righteousness! An attempt to speak a little in exhortation this evening greatly augmented my disorder. Friday, July 1. In prayer today with I. B., a soldier in the 23rd Regiment, the Lord greatly refreshed and strengthened my soul. My mind was strongly impressed with a persuasion that God, through mercy, would restore me to health. If so, I am determined, by His assistance, 
to be more than ever intent on promoting his cause and his glory. Gave an exhortation at night, and met the leaders. But the next day I was much indisposed. Nevertheless, I spent part of my time in reading the afflicted condition of the Waldenses, when so wickedly persecuted by the Dominicans, with the rise of those brutish men. Lord's Day 3 Poor Mr. H. came to me in great distress. He is a native of Stowbridge, where, as he supposes, he has a wife now living, and he has been so unwatchful as to suffer his affections to stray. May the Lord deliver him out of this dangerous snare of Satan. If not, he may be undone. I spoke with freedom this morning from Job 10, 2, and spent part of the day in reading of the holy war which was carried on against the Waldenses and Albigenses by the devil, the Pope, and their emissaries. Though my body is still weak, my soul is strong in the Lord, and joyful in his salvation. And at night I was able to preach with spirit, and found myself happy in addressing a large and attentive audience. Monday 4. I spent part of this day in visiting a few friends, and found my heart much united to I.S., a musician of the 23rd Regiment. Was much better tonight than I had been for some time, and enjoyed a good night's rest. Tuesday 5. In reading the life of Calvin, it appeared that many in his day had opposed the doctrine of predestination, and all who opposed it were spoken of by him and his followers as bad men. My fever returned this evening, and it was a painful, restless night. But the will of the Lord be done. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Found very great lassitude of body the next day also, but my soul hungered and thirsted for more of God. In reading Clark's Life of Origin, I felt a strong desire to imitate that great and good man, as far as he went right. Thursday 7. My disorder was much abated, and I had power to speak plainly and pointedly to both saints and sinners. Lord's Day 10. My bodily weakness has been such for a few days past as to prevent my officiating much in public. However, I ventured to preach twice today, but in the evening was so weak that I could scarce stand in the pulpit. But while preaching on the parable of the prodigal son, the Lord greatly refreshed and strengthened me, though I went to bed very ill at night. Satan tempted me today to think much of my gifts. Alas, what poor creatures we are, and to what dangers we are exposed! What are all our gifts, unless they answer some good purpose? Unless properly improved, they neither make us holier nor happier. We have nothing but what we have received, and unless we are humble in the possession of them, they only make us more like devils, and more fit for hell. How wonderfully is the language and behavior of Mr. L. changed towards me! Before I was everything that was bad, but now all is very good. This is a mistake. My doctrine and preaching are the same and so is my manner. But such is the deceitfulness of the man. His favorite, Mr. Blank, is now gone. Had I preached like an archangel, it would have been to no purpose, while I thought it my duty to oppose him. Monday 11. My soul is not so intensely devoted to God as I would have it, though my desires for more spirituality are very strong. Lord, when shall my poor heart be as a rising, active, holy flame. Blessed be God! My illness is more moderate today than it has been for some days past. On Wednesday, a letter from S.O. informed me that the house in Baltimore was then ready to be enclosed. He also expressed a great desire to persevere. May the Lord give him grace so to do. Thursday 14. My mind is in peace. I have now been sick near ten months, and many days closely confined. Yet I have preached about three hundred times, and rode near two thousand miles in that time, though very frequently in a high fever. Here is no ease, worldly profit, or honor. What then but the desire of pleasing God and serving souls could stimulate to such laborious and painful duties? Oh, that my labor may not be in vain! 
that the Lord may give me to see fruit of these weak but earnest endeavors many days hence. After preaching this evening with some warmth of heart, I was very close and pointed in meeting the society. Saturday, 16. My heart was much taken up with God. Letters from my dear friends, Mr. F. and Mr. R., gave me great satisfaction. In meeting the band society, I showed them the possibility of using all the means, and without sincerity and spirituality, they might still be destitute of true religion. Monday, 18. The Lord assisted me in yesterday's duties, and He is the keeper and comforter of my soul today. A poor, unhappy young woman, who had abandoned herself to the devil and wicked men, being at the point of death, and expecting to go shortly and render an account of herself to God, sent for me to visit her. I felt some reluctance, but considering the danger her soul was in, thought it my duty to go. She was very attentive while I spoke plainly to her, and made prayer to God in her behalf. Strange infatuation, that men will not seriously think of preparing for death till it comes upon them. If we were sure of dying in a few hours, most men would think it their duty to labor for a preparation. But when no man is sure of living a few hours, very few think seriously about it. So does the God of this world blind the minds of mankind. Thursday, 21. My heart enjoys great freedom, with much peace and love both towards God and man. Lord, ever keep me from all sin, and increase the graces of thy Holy Spirit in my soul. A letter from Mr. R. brought melancholy tidings of A.W. Alas for that man! He has been useful, but was puffed up, and so fell into the snare of the devil. My heart pitied him, but I fear he died a backslider. Lord's Day 24 Ended the parable of the prodigal son. Does it not appear from this parable that some who, comparatively speaking, have all their lifetime endeavored to please God, and are entitled to all his purchased communicative blessings, are nevertheless not favored with such rapturous sensations of divine joy as some others. I remember when I was a small boy and went to school, I had serious thoughts, and a particular sense of the being of a god, and greatly feared both an oath and a lie. At twelve years of age the Spirit of God strove frequently and powerfully with me. But being deprived of proper means and exposed to bad company, no effectual impressions were left on my mind. And, though fond of what some call innocent diversions, I abhorred fighting and quarreling. When anything of this sort happened, I always went home displeased. But I have been much grieved to think that so many Sabbaths were idly spent, which might have been better improved. However, wicked as my companions were, and fond as I was of play, I never imbibed their vices. When between thirteen and fourteen years of age, the Lord graciously visited my soul again. I then found myself more inclined to obey, and carefully attended preaching in West Bromwick, so that I heard Stillingfleet, Bagnell, Ryland, Anderson, Mansfield, and Talbot, men who preached the truth. I then began to watch over my inward and outward conduct, and having a desire to hear the Methodists, I went to Wensbury, and heard Mr. F. and Mr. I., but did not understand them, though one of their subjects is fresh in my memory to this day. This was the first of my hearing the Methodists. After that, another person went with me to hear them again. The text was, The time will come, when they will not endure sound doctrine. My companion was cut to the heart, but I was unmoved. The next year Mr. M. R. came into those parts. I was then about fifteen, and, young as I was, the word of God soon made deep impressions on my heart, which brought me to Jesus Christ, who graciously justified my guilty soul through faith in his precious blood, and soon showed me the excellency and necessity of holiness. About sixteen I experienced a marvelous display of the grace of God, which some might think was full sanctification, and was indeed very happy, though in an ungodly family. At about seventeen I began to hold some public meetings, 
and between seventeen and eighteen began to exhort and preach. When about twenty-one, I went through Staffordshire and Gloucestershire in the place of a traveling preacher, and the next year through Bedfordshire, Sussex, etc. In 1769 I was appointed assistant in Northamptonshire, and the next year traveled in Wiltshire. September 3, 1771, I embarked for America, and for my own private satisfaction began to keep an imperfect journal. Today Dr. O. preached a pertinent discourse on the shortness of time. The Lord favored me with great liberty in the evening, while preaching to a large congregation from Genesis 19, 17. And I was enabled to speak plainly and closely in meeting the society at night. End of section 11. Recording by Brian Keenan.